Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I've got a quick video for you guys to show you how you can use ExpressVPN. If you're new to VPNs or you're just not familiar with how to use a VPN in the first place, I'm going to demonstrate that for you. And I'll also tell you a little bit about Express in case you're still not sure whether or not it's a good choice for you and your situation. Now, if you're looking for full reviews or you want to jump straight to the links to pricing and discounts, you'll find all of that in the description down below. Now, ExpressVPN is actually one of the better VPNs out there, if not arguably the best. I mean, it really depends on what you're looking for. Now, the reason I like to use Express, it's because it's, well, very easy to use and it's quick to start up and it connects very quickly. So as you can tell, it took less than a second, literally less than a second to connect to a server. Whereas with other VPNs, it takes quite a bit. So if I were to just give you an example here, and let's just say I connect to the server right here, you'll notice that it takes quite a few seconds. So three, four seconds, whatever it is, it's not bad, not bad at all. This is still quick. But since I already have something quicker than that, then I just kind of revert to using ExpressVPN naturally speaking, because it's just that quick. So yeah, that's just my personal choice. Now ExpressVPN, as you can tell, I just used it in front of you. It's that easy. Now, if you're going to look for a specific server, all you need to do is go to VPN locations. You'll see all the locations here. You've got some recommended ones and all locations. Simply click on a location. Let's just go to Europe, for example. Let's say we connect to the Netherlands. I can double click the server. I can check out what locations they have, or I can just single click on the server and turn on the VPN. And that is basically it. So if I go to any IP finder, let's just move this right here. You'll notice that it was in Germany because I was connected to the German server. And if I go ahead and refresh, I will now be in Holland or the Netherlands as far as my internet is concerned. And that's how I, one, hide my IP address, two, get access to, well, anything that is available in Holland or any connected location. If I want access to American content, I'll connect to an American server. If I want access to any other kind of content, let's just say, UK kind of content. Let's go ahead and just pick a location here. Let's just say the Midlands. If I were to double click here, I'll connect immediately to the Midlands and I'll just give it a refresh. And when I give it a refresh, you'll notice that it says the United Kingdom. And it's as simple as that. So, okay, this way I'll be able to access, let's say the BBC iPlayer. If I have a bank account and I don't want to use a foreign IP address to access my account, because sometimes bank accounts will think it's a fraud if a foreign IP address is trying to access your account. So if you're abroad and you want to engage in some online banking, you're better off connecting to a local server so that your bank doesn't think that somebody else and temporarily suspend your access to the account until they're sure that it's you. So to avoid that, just use a VPN. Now, in order to use a VPN effectively, obviously you have all the locations here and you can connect to any location. So that's good enough. You know how to use that. It's very simple. Now, as far as the features, you'll just need to be aware of a couple of features. First one is the kill switch and the kill switch will stop your internet connection if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So let's say you're in a censorship heavy country and you don't want to risk getting your information exposed or whatever it is that you're doing online exposed if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So in this case, the kill switch will simply disconnect you from the internet, which prevents any of these rare or accidental leaks. Now, the second thing you want to look out for is just the protocols. I like to set it on lightweight UDP because it's the fastest. Automatic will always work great, but since for the most part, it will just connect me to lightweight UDP, I just like to use the fastest protocol. So for fast connections and just better support overall, you want to go with the lightweight UDP and you can keep the advanced options on automatic as well. Now, advanced protection will only work with lightweight UDP as well. And this will just act like a little bit of an ad blocker as well as a simple form of parental control if you'd like to block adult sites or if you may have kids in the house. And that is basically it. Now, the split tunneling feature is a very useful feature that will essentially allow you to select which applications you'd like to route through the VPN connection and which are not. So if I turn on the VPN now and the split tunneling is on only allow selected apps to use the VPN, well, that's exactly what it's going to do. So only Google Chrome and Qubit Torrent will be affected by the VPN while the rest of my connection and 
and the rest of my applications in my device, whether it's a phone or a computer, will be left outside the VPN tunnel. Of course, you can do this the other way around where everything in your computer is routed through the VPN except for these selected applications. So it's a very useful feature, not incredibly popular amongst the VPN beginners, but once you start using it, you'll kind of understand the power of this tool. So that is basically it for this video. And if I'm going to leave you with something, I would say that ExpressVPN is, despite the price, which is a little bit higher than usual VPNs, it's still just a couple of bucks more expensive a month. And it is the easiest VPN to use, whether you're looking to access streaming services, you've got 105 countries, you'll be able to secure up to eight devices per subscription. It's super reliable and consistent. And it's the best VPN when it comes to accessing the free internet in censorship heavy countries like China, for example. So if you ever want a VPN that works, whether you're inside or outside China, ExpressVPN is definitely the type of VPN that you want to go for, especially if you're privacy conscious, since ExpressVPN has plenty of proof that they don't collect user data. They don't share it, they don't sell it. And it seems like they're essentially not interested in that. So if you end up picking up ExpressVPN, you'll find links to pricing, discounts, and again, the full review all in the description down below. Now, as far as the pricing, I did speak with ExpressVPN and it seemed like most people end up spending more money on the monthly plan because they think they're not gonna need the VPN for longer than a month. Now, if that's the case, definitely go for the monthly plan. But if you know you're gonna use the VPN for longer than a month, then you probably wanna go for a plan that lowers the monthly rate, like the six month plan or the yearly plan. And with a discount below, you'll be getting more than just 12 months. So feel free to take advantage of that while it lasts. In either way, there's a 30 day money back guarantee in case you change your mind. So besides that, comment below. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.